If you're anything like me, you've probably spent way too much time filling up online shopping carts with tons of new filmmaking gear and then dreaming up ways you're gonna pay for it. At least I hope other people do that too because otherwise this is just embarrassing. Filmmaking is a notoriously expensive hobby and if you make it your career, it gets even worse. It's actually gotten to the point where every year at Christmas, my mom asks me what I want and I have no idea what to say because everything I want costs like thousands of dollars. I guess more socks? The good news is that there are at least a handful of really useful things that I use on almost every shoot that won't break the bank. So in today's video, we're gonna dive into six handy tools for filmmakers that are all under $20. The last item on this list took me almost six years to figure out for some reason, and without it, I managed to do quite a bit of unnecessary damage over the years. So you might wanna stick around for that one and save yourself some embarrassment. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. All right, so maybe you're putting together a run and gun filmmaking kit and you're looking for stuff you can throw in there that you'll use a lot, but that doesn't cost a small fortune. Now, the words cheap and filmmaking can be really hard to put in the same sentence. And a lot of the time when you buy cheap, you're just throwing away money on stuff you'll have to replace a year down the line. We've all bought that discount drone or gimbal or light panel that we thought would work just as well and save us a few bucks and then had it fall apart after the first shoot. This video isn't about a bunch of cheap crap that's just gonna end up in the landfill by the end of the year. These six items are things that I genuinely use all the time and just happen to not cost much. There's gonna be links to everything in the description as well. So if you wanna grab some of the stuff yourself, it'll all be there. The first thing on this list is probably one of the most surprisingly useful pieces of filmmaking making gear out there the humble bongo tie. If you've never heard of them, bongo ties are basically industrial strength elastic bands with these little wooden things on them that look kind of like tiny bongo drums. You can wrap these little guys around pretty much anything and use them to attach anything to anything else. Uh, you can use them to hang cables off the floor, to fix batteries to stands for powering lights, uh, to keep wires together on your camera rig. Pretty much anything that you can think of that needs to be held together can be done with bongo ties. And they're much easier to take apart with gaffer tape. When I'm working, I usually keep a few on my wrist at all times because as soon as you've gotten used to having them around, you'll find uses for them everywhere. A pack of 10 bongo ties, I think costs about $7. For me, this one's a no-brainer. Just grab a pack and throw them in your bag and you'll definitely find ways to use them. The next thing on this list took me years to learn about for some reason, but once I got turned onto it, I used them on pretty much every single shoot where a lav mic is used. When I shoot documentaries, I'm almost always putting lav mics onto the main characters because like I keep saying over and over again on this channel, good audio is probably more important than good shots to tell a story. Now, if you have the budget for a sound guy, I'd say always hire the sound guy because it takes all the stress off your plate. But I find myself on shoots all the time where I'm running camera and sound by myself. And in situations like this, you want a way to mic up the characters easily while keeping the mic itself hidden. I used to do this with pieces of gaff tape on the inside of the shirt or medical tape right on the chest, but neither of those do well if there's a lot of wind and pulling tape off of a hairy man's chest is never fun. Then on one shoot, I noticed the DP had these little wind jammer things that I found that are called undercovers and my mind exploded. They're basically just little pieces of dead cat that you use with these sticky bits that are double-sided uh, adhesives. And you sandwich the mic between them, put one end on the back like this, and then the other end goes inside the shirt. Boom, your character's mic'd. It might not be what a professional sound guy would do, but for a cheap solution for small teams, it's fast and easy and generally doesn't fall off people unless they're drenched in sweat. The ones I use are made by a company called Rycote, uh, or Rycot, I'm not sure how you say it, and I think it's about $13 for a pack of six with 30 stickers. You can use these way more than once and just get more of the stickers for super cheap. It's weird that it took me so long to learn about them, but now that I know, I keep a pack of these with me and my lav mics at all times. Okay, let's change gears and talk about lighting. Film lighting and cheap aren't usually good words to put together, and I generally don't recommend super cheap lights because they give all sorts of weird colors and will eventually just short out and make e-waste. But this isn't a light fixture, it's a light modifier. And if you're looking to get super soft light on a budget, you can't go wrong with the China Ball. China balls or paper lanterns have been used in Hollywood for years and you can find them on film sets that could afford pretty much any lighting gear a DP could want. The reason they go with these cheap paper lanterns is that they create a nice soft glow that covers a wide area and you can hang them easily over any scene. I actually just moved to a new apartment and I don't have one with me right now, but it's basically just a ball of thin paper held together by some wires. You can put any kind of light into it from small handheld things to bigger spotlights and turn it into a big glowing soft orb. You can use them to light interviews or 
cardboard to light rooms, or even put one on a stick and have a production assistant boom one over your scene. The downside is they're not very rugged and they don't do well if they get wet. But for the price, your risk is pretty low. So if you're trying to get a soft source of light but don't have the budget for a huge softbox or the crew to handle big sheets of diffusion, think about a China ball instead. All right, let's stay on light modifiers for a second because even though I shoot documentaries pretty much exclusively, I still use lights all the time. And I definitely prefer soft light to hard light. And since docks often involve a lot of travel, it's not always possible to pack a four foot softbox and a high powered light like an Aperture 300D for your interviews. Or maybe you're just starting out and don't want to spend that much on lights right off the bat, but you still want your interviews to look great. In that case, you can get some amazing results with just a big window and the humble shower curtain. I bought this shower curtain from Amazon, I think seven years ago, and I'm still using it today. It's just a translucent piece of white fabric, um, but other than the fact that it's really cheap, it's not all that different from professional fabrics used on Hollywood sets to diffuse light. Okay, before people get mad at me, I know that ones made by Matthews or something are better, but an eight by eight piece of silk is well over $100, and you generally need frames and stands to hang it from. A cheap run-of-the-mill shower curtain will get you most of the way there for a fraction of the cost. So if you're a professional gaffer and you're just screaming at your computer right now, I'm sorry. I know it's not the same thing as real diffusion cloth, but in my experience shooting high-end documentaries, it does the job almost as well. Mostly I use these things when I'm trying to use a window for my main key light uh, during an interview, but there are lots of other creative uses for them. Direct sunlight through a window can be a bit harsh and sometimes not the most flattering, but just grab your shower curtain and gaff tape it over the window and suddenly you've got a much softer source that looks great on faces. They fold down super small and I keep mine at the bottom of my bag and it's crazy how many times I find myself pulling it out. Of all the pieces of gear I have, this is probably the highest value to use ratio. For me, a shower curtain is a no brainer and if you want to impress a client, you could always just put it in a Matthews stuff sack and pretend it's the real thing. Okay, that's it for lighting for now. Next, I want to talk about cleaning, specifically how to keep your lenses clean while shooting. Documentaries don't usually take place in super controlled environments like movies do, and my lenses get seriously dirty sometimes. Sometimes it could be a splash of rain, or maybe it's a fingerprint from a curious little kid, but you'll need a way to clean your front element every once in a while. A lot of lenses ship with those little microfiber cloths, and those work okay for a little while, but I find they often end up in my pocket where they get all sweaty and nasty or they fall on the ground and get dirty. And let's face it, who has the time to wash those things? Years ago, a DP friend of mine turned me onto these things, which are lens tissues, and I've been using them ever since. They come in these books of a hundred and you just tear them out as you need them. I generally don't like one-time use items for environmental reasons, but when it comes to wiping down the front of your expensive lenses, this is one area where I'll make an exception. They're designed to use on microscopes and telescopes, and so they don't leave any residue behind. And since you have a hundred of them, you don't need to worry if one gets soaked or dirty like a microfiber. These things are also pretty much the same as grease paper that makeup artists use on people's faces, and they're really helpful if you've got someone sitting down for an interview and they look all shiny. Just hand them one of these and tell them to wipe down their face before you start rolling, and they'll look way better. Tape is a filmmaker's best friend. When I was in AC, I carried rolls of the stuff on my belt at all times, and these days I have an entire drawer in my office that's filled with nothing but different kinds of tape. There's clear tape, and colored tape, and thick tape, thin tape, you get the point. Tape is super useful, and you can never have too much of it. When people think about filmmaking tape, I think they usually think of gaffer tape first, and that's for good reason. It's super strong and will stay stuck most of the time. Every filmmaker will want a few rolls of gaff tape, but for the sixth item on this list, I'm actually gonna suggest a different kind of tape. And for some crazy reason, it took me almost six years to figure this out for myself. One of the best things about gaffer tape is how sticky it is, but that can also be a bad thing. Gaff tape can easily rip the paint off the wall, and if it gets really hot, it'll melt and leave sticky residue on all your gear. It's the go-to when you need pure brute strength, but there are all kinds of situations where you need something a little more gentle, and that's why you need this stuff paper tape. I don't know why nobody told me how useful paper tape was, but for the first half of my career, I thought that filmmakers only used gaff tape, and I wrecked more than one person's wall because of it, including my own. Paper tape, or masking tape, or painter's tape as it's sometimes called, isn't as strong as gaff tape, but it won't wreck a wall and it won't leave glue on everything. I probably use paper tape most often for labeling memory cards after I pull them out of the camera. Between all the different cameras and drones I'll use on a shoot, it's easy to shoot 10 or 20 or more cards in a day, and if you just leave them all in a pile, it's a nightmare to back up. Sticking a label on them makes it way easier to know what to call the folders in the backup, and it's also a clear indicator of what cards have already been used so you don't format them by mistake. I've done this a few times with gaff tape, and trust me, you don't want to make that mistake. It will gum up all the little contact points and might even cause the cards to get jammed in their slots and be hard to take out of the camera. Paper tape doesn't do this. 
That's just one example, but paper tape should be your go-to whenever you need to tape onto delicate surfaces. Uh, if you need to tape your trusty shower curtain to someone's wall without tearing the paint, paper tape. I'm definitely not saying to skip gaff tape because I absolutely love gaff tape. I'm saying that it's not right for every filmmaking situation. And so throwing a roll or two of paper tape as well will really round out your kit. You can get five rolls for like $8. So for me, it's an easy decision. I use different colors for different cameras and it's gonna be really clear for your editor to figure out what's what in post. So there it is, six incredibly useful filmmaking tools that are all under $20. In fact, most of these are actually under $10, but I really wanted to get the undercovers on this list. So I bumped up the limit a bit. I've had buyer's remorse more than a few times in my filmmaking career after buying some new gimbal or toy that I knew I didn't really need and couldn't afford. But with these six things, you're getting stuff that you can use 100% on almost every shoot. And it costs less than a takeout burrito. Unless you know a place with super cheap burritos. In that case, let me know where it is in the comments so I can get in on that action. Hope that video was helpful. And if you think I forgot anything, let me know in the comments. If you did find that video useful, maybe think about subscribing or even checking out this other video I made on how I put together the ultimate filmmaker's tool pouch. See ya.